Tuesday's American League pennant race game beginning in the afternoon at Fenway Park. Red Sox making up Monday's rain out with the Blue Jays. First of the day-night doubleheader. Bottom five, Big Poppy makes it 3-1 Boston with a double scoring Edgar Renteria. But the Jays get the go-ahead run to the plate in the eighth. John Papelbon facing former Red Sox great Shea Hillenbrand. And Papelbon ends the threat. Hillenbrand 0 for 4 with three Ks in the day game. Jays looking at Papelbon's 95 mile an hour heat after seven innings of Tim Wakefield's knuckleball. Mike Timlin on with a tying run in the ninth. Gets Gabe Gross. He closes in his 79th appearance of the year. One shy of the Red Sox record. And Boston wins 3-1 behind Wakefield, who pitched seven innings of three-hit ball for his 16th win. And this is where things stood heading into Tuesday night after Boston's afternoon win over the Blue Jays. Red Sox and Yankees dead even atop the AL East. Both Boston and New York also tied with the Tribe for the AL Wild Card. Sox, Yankees, Indians, all 92 and 64. And going into Tuesday night, which is where we pick things up. Hello, welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthium, Scott Van Pelt along the way. Not a bad way to end the baseball season. Take those three teams, throw in the White Sox, and you've got four American League teams all fighting for two division titles and a wild card spot. And those four teams meet this weekend. The question is, will there be any separation between now and then? To the nightcap portion, the Sox and the Jays. David Ortiz. Man, if this guy wins the MVP, it'd be hard to argue. He delivers again and makes it a 3 0 lead for the Sox. And Kurt Schilling is on the mound. So if you're a Sox fan, you've got to feel pretty good. Bottom four, the lead is still the same three, but it's now 5 2. Base is loaded. Jason Veritek pops it up. Corey Koski and Greg Zahn. They will collide, but Koski will hold on. The Jays get out of the jam with help from the pen. The Jays don't go away. Frank Catalanato, a monster, four for five. Ball game, a ground rule double off Schilling with two on and nobody out. Aaron Hill scores, it's five to three. We move to the seventh inning. It's a 5-4 game. Runners in the corner. Schilling and Vernon Wells had a nice battle on a 3-2 pitch. 94-mile-an-hour fastball, but it's up. And Wells smokes it to center. We're tied at five. Schilling's line, six and a third, ten hits, five earned, eight Ks. He was not happy afterwards. Later in the inning, one out. Bases loaded for Shea Hillenbrand. He's already caved six times. Make it seven. Tying the major league record for strikeouts in a doubleheader. Top of the eighth. We're still tied. Runners on second and third. Rookie Craig Hansen, who he can bring it a little bit himself, facing Russ Adams, who had two knocks in this game. This isn't one of them, but he gets enough on it. To score Greg Zahn, who walked to lead off the inning, those kill you every time. The Blue Jays take a 6-5 to five lead. It's bottom eight, same score. Justin Spire facing Tony Graffanino, and Graffanino goes four, six, three. Jays turn it. They win it 7-5. to five. Miguel Batista pitches an uneventful ninth for the save, and the Jays earn the split. Mike Mucina will face Schilling in the regular season finale at Fenway. Mucina starting for the Yankees in Baltimore Tuesday night. Came in 9-4 career against his former team. But serves one up in the bottom of the second. And Melvin Morris doubles in two. It's 4-1 Orioles. Mucina lasted only one and two-thirds. Gave up five runs on seven hits. 5-1 in the third. Gary Sheffield on his way to a monster night. Facing Bruce Chen. Serve it up. Yard. Two run shot. Number 32 for Sheffield. The prelude of things to come for him, and it's 5 3 Baltimore. Top four. Two on. Nobody out for Derek Jeter, who homered earlier, but Chen rings him up. Next batter, it's A Rod. Chen gets him looking as well. After a walk to Jason Giambi, they're loaded for Sheffield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> One more time. 11th career Grand Slam, 33rd home run of the year. It's 7 5 Yankees after they had trailed 5 1. It was 7-6 in the home half of the fourth. Jay Gibbons off Al Leiter. Two-run shot is 24th. Gibbons three for four. And now it's 8-7 Orioles. Back and forth we go. 9-7 in the fifth. Felix Rodriguez in. Base is loaded for Melvin Mora. Right off Jorge Posada's glove, David Newhand scores 10-7 Orioles. Rodriguez would walk Mora to reload the bases for Miguel Tejada. And Rodriguez walks to Hada. It's 11-7. Baltimore scored five runs off three New York relievers in the fifth. Wayne Franklin in. Facing the next guy, it's Jay Gibbons. And Franklin walks Gibbons. 12-7 now. Joe Torre said afterwards, sometimes these things get away from you. The top seven, 13-7 Orioles. Aaron Rockers facing Sheffield is this home run number three. Newhan at the wall. But watch the Yankee fan trying to knock the ball out of his glove. That's unsportsmanlike right there. 
Yankees lose 17-9, just their third loss in 16 games as the Orioles snap a nine-game losing streak. How'd that guy even get in the ballpark? There's far too many Yankee fans in Camden Yards, I'll tell you that much. So crazy a game, it merits a scoreboard. First time since August 5th and only the second time since June 4th that the Orioles scored double-digit runs. This was the most runs scored by the Yankees in a loss since last July 24th when they were beaten 11-10 by the Red Sox. This one played in a tidy four hours and 16 minutes. AL Central, the Indians down two. To the White Sox opening up a three-game set with the Devil Rays. Devil Rays lead 1-0, 2-1 for Julio Lugo, who turns on the Scott Ellerton offering. He was 3-for-4 with three RBIs, his sixth home run of the season, and it's 4-0 D-Ray. Said Lou Pinella afterwards, afterwards, we knew Cleveland would come back at us. They lead the majors, would come from behind victories. It's a 5-3 game in the bottom of the ninth. Here comes Coco Crisp. With a double off Danny Baez. The Indians in business to do business. Next up, Johnny Peralta. He works the walk. First and second, nobody out. Next up is Travis Hafner. This guy's been a horse. Ground ball to Travis Lee. Lugo can't get the ball out of the glove to turn a double play, but they weren't going to get it anyway. First and third, one out. Next up, Victor Martinez. Only one hit in this game, but it's a big one. Doesn't get to the gap, though. Crisp scores. It's 5-4 men on first and third. Ronnie Belliard in the top 15 in a statistic he would not want to be in, and that is grounded into double plays. This one ends the ball game and the threat. Indians make a comeback. Not enough noise, though. The D-Rays win. So here's where things stand. In the American League East and in the American League Wild Card. Everyone's tied. Everyone. That's it. That's all Unbelievable. Can... Everyone is tied. Of the American League East, Johnny Damon said it's going to come down to the weekend. It's the master plan, God's ways, Yankees, Red Sox. That's just how it's going to be. But the wild card, too, could go anyway. It's completely up in the air. Dean Nice trying to win number 23, but his team, they've lost four in a row and 10 of 12, and they were not real good in this one. Preston Wilson up the middle. There's one of the three errors the Marlins committed in the game. Brad Wilkerson scores. The Nationals lead 4-0 on the Lowell error. Top three. It's 4-0, one on for Marlon Byrd, who tied a career high with four hits. It's a double that scores Ryan Zimmerman from second. The Nats are up 5-0. They go on to win this one 11-1, and Dontra Willis gives up a career high nine runs. Four of them were unearned, but he sees his ERA jump to 2.59. And Dontra might very well have seen the Cy Young slip out of his grasp. Those nine runs he gave up, as I mentioned, caused that ERA to rise. Chris Carpenter is already 21-5, and five, starts again Wednesday with a chance to take control and settle this Cy Young debate once and for all. Dontrell's teammate, at least for the rest of this year, A.J. Burnett in damage control, apologized Tuesday for his comments Monday that led to Jack McKeon sending him home for the final week of the season. The free agent to be said in a statement, I often wear my emotions on my sleeve, sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. Meanwhile, in the National League, it's a uh, conflicted Cardinals bunch, perhaps, opening a two-game set against the Astros Tuesday. Now, the Cardinals might like Houston to win the wild card because that would mean St. Louis gets the NL West winner in the playoffs opening round, which would be probably the sub-500 Padres, and they'd certainly take that. But on the other hand, if the Astros miss the playoffs altogether, the Cardinals could forget about facing Pettit, Clemens, and Oswald down the road because remember St. Louis and Houston, they went the full seven in last year's NLCS. So the Astros came into St. Louis a game and a half up on the fills for the NL wild card. And Oswald, 10 of his 12 losses this year on the road. Bottom one gets Reggie Sanders. Oswald struck out seven Tuesday, did not walk a bat. Bottom three, first and third, two outs. It's Sanders to short, and Oswald is out of the jam. He allowed only one run on eight hits in seven. Top six, Jason Lane. Oh, two run shot is 25th. Two nothing used, and these the only two runs allowed by Matt Morris in six innings of work. Two one in the eighth. How about Craig Vigio? How about him? Off Jason Marquis is 25th. Three one Astros, and now you know what time it is. That's right, it's Brad Lidge time. Converted 22 straight save offs. Bottom nine facing John Rodriguez. Lich's 39th save and 32 mm. chances. Win number 19 for Oswald. And the Astros take it 3-1. Houston snapping a six-game losing streak in St. Louis.
So the Phillies have to win to stay within a game and a half of Houston. Top three, the Metropolitans already lead one to nothing. Jose Reyes had himself a ball game. Four for five, three extra base hits. Here's one of those extras right here. Willie Randolph said, I challenged these guys two weeks ago to keep playing hard. Clearly they are. The next batter is Marlon Anderson, and he rips one into right field. That scores Reyes. The Metro Metropolitans would have a 3 nothing lead at the end of the inning. The move to the seventh is now 3-2. to two. Jimmy Rollins has got that hitting streak up to 32, straight through the box. That's the longest in Phillies history. It is the longest hitting streak in Major League Baseball in three years. Two batters later, first and second for the Phillies, two outs. Pat Burrell gets rung up on the 3-2 pitch. Threats over. Bottom eight, David Bell at first for the Phillies. Shane Victorino rips one into center. David Bell is hustling, and Carlos Beltran makes an unbelievable play. To Charlie Manuel of the play. Bell, he's a good base runner. That was bad judgment. Bell bumming, still 3-2. Bottom nine runner on second era. Heilman, Bobby Abreu. That's filthy. That's it. That's all. No happy day. To Charlie Manuel, we don't quit. Astros, as you saw, they win. Phillies, as you saw, they lose. So it's now two and a half games. Rockies Tuesday would clinch Atlanta's 14th straight division title. Bobby Cox, 13 career, 90 win season. Looking for number 90. That's one. Bottom three, Marcus Giles solo shot. Giles 14th, and the Braves have a quick 3 0 lead. Sixth inning, they are keeping a close eye in the Met Philly game. A Phillies loss clinches the division for Atlanta. Everybody in the bullpen chanting, Let's go, Mets. In Atlanta, of all places. Phillies lose 3 2, so the Braves clinch regardless of the outcome of this one. But Giles making sure in the sixth, his second of the game, 15th of the year, it's 9 3, and we can now set up the clubhouse for a little bubbly. Top nine, Aaron Miles grounds out to end it, and go crazy, Atlanta. Braves win. They celebrate their 14th straight division title. Andrew Jones probably getting ready for an MVP award as well. He's out there with Raphael for call. And the celebration and the <laughs> champagne is on. <laughs> Everybody hop on. Atlanta has won an amazing straight 14 division titles. That's five more than any other team in any major professional sport has ever won. In fact, the last time the Braves did not win the division was 1990 when they finished last in the NL West. Here's Timber Dare. <laughs> We've done this a million times. It never gets old, but to be able to experience with all experience it with all the, the the young guys is great. I can't be happier for people that carried our team, Bobby Cox, in his 14 years. I finally get to celebrate something that truly was unexpected, and then hopefully we can take it as far as possible. Well, we'll find out. It's a new generation of Bravos. Andrew Jones, Major League High, 51 homers, NL Best, 128 driven in. Everybody loves the story about Jeff Francoeur. Called up in July, 14 homers, 45 RBI, and a cannon for a throwing arm. And you want to hear about Braves pitching? How about Jorge Sosa? A career record of 11 and 26 entering this season. He's now 13 and 3. Peter Gammons, will this version of the Braves win it all? The Braves can win their second world championship in this 14 title run. They have speed at the top of the order. They have power in the middle of the order with Chipper and Andrew Jones. And they have John Smoltz and Tim Hudson at the front of their rotation. But the reason they've won only one world championship is that their pitching is better geared historically to the first six months than to October. And it's the same thing this year. Their pitching staff is last in the National League in strikeouts, a bad sign. And also, they don't know how Kyle Farnsworth will fare when it gets gets tense. Well, as we know, it's more about the division titles than about the World Series championships for this ball club. They've lost in the NLDS in four of the last five years. And while Atlanta has reached five World Series during this amazing run, they've won only one ring. The Angels beat the A's. The American League finally sees someone qualify for the playoffs. Bottom seven, A's down, 4-2. Adam Melhus on first. Nick Swisher at the plate facing Urban Santana. It's a base hit. And Vlad Guerrero, who has got a hand cannon attached to his shoulder, keeps Adam Melhus at third base. A double for Swisher, but Vlad, his arm keeps him at third. Scott Shields on to pitch to Mark Ellis, who took the collar. Grounds out to end the inning. It's still a 4-2 Angels lead. Bottom nine, Francisco Rodriguez on the mound, facing pitch hitter Marco Scudero, who smokes him out of the yard. It's a 4-3 game, but now, here we go. Francisco Rodriguez, first pitch to Kelty, is lifted in the air, left field. Juan Rivera under it, and light up the halo. The Angels are the 2005 American.
American League West champions. Johnny Drama victory. Skipper, your reaction. This is why you play. There's no consolation prizes, and you know you keep you want to keep moving on. And like I said, I think this year we're in better shape than we were last year at this time. So hopefully we're going to fare better in the playoffs. We never uh, thought that this is what's going to be easy at all. We knew how what kind what kind of team the the A's are and the Texas and all those guys. So we never never even thought about being easy at all. We know we, they were going to give us a battle, and but we always thought that we could win it. And they did for the second consecutive division title in the fifth in club history. The Angels make the postseason for the third time in the last four seasons. How'd they do it? They had one heck of a kick to the finish. They win 10 of their last 11 games while the A's went 4-7. and seven. Peter Gammons, though. The White Sox lead over Cleveland down to two games. Chicago playing in Detroit Tuesday. Bottom five, that's Craig Monroe. It's off Brandon McCarthy, a solo shot is 20th, 2-1 Detroit. Bottom six, Mags. Maglio Ordonez, Tadahito Aguchi running out, Aaron Rowan running in, Noonan. Carlos Guillen scores, 3-1 Tigers. Top eight now, two on, one out, Pablo Azuna. <laughs> Guillen might have saved the run there with a backhander, but everybody's safe, so now they're loaded for the pinch hitter, Jeff Blum, batting just 115 in his last eight games. Right back at you. White Sox stranded 12. Ozzy Guillen said, it keeps happening. I don't know why. Top nine, Paul Canerco. Singles to left. Juan Uribe scores. Chicago comes back there within one. So now, big spot, Jermaine Die. Tying and go-ahead runs on to center. And that's it. Tigers win 3-2. Chicago keeps plummeting. They've lost 12 of their last 19. So here's the deal now in the AL Central. White Sox fall by one to the Tigers. Tribe comes back against the Devil Rays, but they fall just short. So the division lead for the White Sox stays at two. Here are your likely starters Wednesday. Bronson Arroyo supposed to start for the Red Sox against the Blue Jays. A Sean Chacon, the sudden ace, pitches for the Yankees at Camden Yards. While Cliff Lee goes for the tribe against the Devil Rays, and Jose Contreras, who's been almost unhittable lately. Maddox's 17 straight years at 500 or better is the second longest streak in history behind Grover Cleveland Alexander, who had a 19 season stretch, which ended in 1929. Also, Maddox would have to win his last two starts to extend his record streak of 17 straight seasons with at least 15 wins. He's working the opener of a two game set against the Pirates at Wrigley Tuesday night and runs into trouble in the fifth against Jason Bay. There uh -oh. goes the 3-1 lead, and there goes the baseball. Three-run shot is 32nd. The Pirates win 5-3, so no 15-win season for Maddox. He says, I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. No reason to. He's won 318 games. Big West, that's Adam Eaton. This is Barry Bonds. And he's done it again. 708 on his career. He is sneaking up on the Bay, the fifth of the year. And the Giants lead 3-0 in his daughter Aisha with a kiss for daddy. Top three, four, three. Giants, Moises Alou at the plate with Bonds on first. And we're going to let you watch his trot around the bases as Ryan Klesko misplays it. And Bonds does not have a whole lot of giddy up left in those legs. Of course, he's had three surgeries on the knee and he just barely beats the throw in. Giants lead five to three as Bonds has to limp back into the dugout. Bottom three, Ramon Hernandez at the plate with two men on. He had an enormous ball game. Triples into right center field. Brian Giles and Mark Sweeney come in to score. We are knotted up at five in the bottom of the third in Petco. You don't see big. This isn't Coors Field. It's Petco. Normally hard to score here. Bottom four, it's a 6-5 game. The Giants are now leading. Khalil Green with a pop-up into foul territory. JT Snow always good with the glove. JT, wonder if he's thinking about Monday night when he went over that way and smacked his handsome mug on a camera. Ooh, ouch. Peter Griffin moment. Ah, he had a dent and so did the camera. Back to the here and now. Eric Young, this happens once every five years. JT Snow makes an error on a ground ball, extending the inning. The bases are loaded. And here you're leading six to five. You give up the extra out and what happens? Ramon Hernandez, I said a monster night. It includes a grand slam off Jeff Becerro. His 12th of the year, the Padres are now ahead nine to six. Hernandez seven RBI in the ball game. And then in the ninth, Trevor Hoffman always lights out except for Monday night when he let a save get away from him. That changeup hung up there a little bit for Bonds, but he does not knock it out of the park. And the Padres might just have put things to bed with that victory because now they have a four-game lead over Los Gigantes. The two teams play two more times, but the Pods' magic numbers two. A win on Wednesday, and that's it. Padres send Pedro Estacio to the mound. The Giants send their best.
Best Sports Center's top place who start at number 10 with the Atlanta Braves. 14 straight division titles, five more than any other team in any major pro sport has ever won. With a win over the Rockies in Atlanta Tuesday night, the Braves clinched their 14th straight. Last time they did not win the division, 1990, when they finished last in the NL West. Only 86 years away from catching Albert Einstein, celebrating 100 years of E equals MC squared. Lookalikes take to the streets. My friend Albert's wicked smack. Chicks uh, dig the wig. Number eight, Angels and A's. Hey, the Angels clinched the AL West. LA of Anaheim has been a playoff team now for the last five seasons. They are in. And this is, well, this is frightening, frankly. Yeah, number seven, insert your own punchline here. These are the uh, jump rope world champions for double dutch from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And that's Martha Stewart, only in America from prison to double dutch. Good thing the ankle bracelet is off. Number six, Yankees Orioles, nice Miguel Tejada. Nice Very stop, two. little 6 4 3 scenario. Beautifully as the Orioles beat the Yankees. Number five, Jays and Sox. Manny, oh, Manny. Always oh, oh no. No. <laughs> Nobody, nobody he has makes no it more entertaining than Manny. He had literally had no clue. Zero. None. <laughs> what day is it? Number four, <laughs> Toledo, Fresno State. Andrew Hawkins jacked up by Richard Marshall. One more time. There you go. Fresno all over the Rockets. Pirates, Cubs, Freddie Sanchez. Do your thing. All stopped by Sanchez. How about this play? Freddie Sanchez just turned in a sparkler. Number two, Mets, Phillies, Carlos Beltran. Look at this Beltran. rocket to throw out David Bell from right center. That's a good play. Oh, son, that's not good base running judgment. In fact, that may be fundamentally unsound. Oh, just an absolute rope. Whoa. Number one in the hood, G, the Yanks and the Oreos. Gary Sheffield, who had 17 home runs in the game, was looking for 18. But David Nguyen is not having it, despite... Is that that filthy truant out there trying to steal the ball? What are you Cancel doing? Cancel the Yankeeography. Sickening, that many Yankee fans in Camden Yards.